Hello, everyone. This is the Intech Center. We are a further education and training center, and we offer functional skills, maths, and English courses and exams. You can find more information at our website, intechcenter.com. Today, we will be going over a sample paper from the City and Guilds Awarding Body. Please do note that this video is to support the funded learners that we have at our center and is therefore for internal use only. Before seeing my solution to each question below, I strongly recommend pausing the video first and attempting the question yourself in order to maximize your benefit and learning from this video. So now we will go ahead and get started with the non-calculator paper. So I'm just going to full screen. Great. So going down to question one, we have what is two over three as a percentage? Give your answer rounded to two decimal places. So we'll look at the first part of the question where we take a fraction and we want it as a percentage. Now, we know that there's a common link between fractions and percentages. And two over three is generally, it's a relatively common uh, fraction that we'd like to convert as a percentage. So you may already know the answer. So what we can do is, in this case, right, we know that as a decimal, you may know it as a decimal as well. So as a decimal, we know that two over three is equal to 0 0.6666, and that repeats on forever, right? Now from a decimal, we want to get to a percentage. So to do that, we will multiply by 100. We get 66.6, right? Six, six, and that repeats on, right? So this is our percentage, put the units as well. So now we look at the second part of the question where it asks us to give our answer rounded to two decimal places. So we have the two decimal places here that we need. Now for the last decimal place here, which is a six, right? This one here, we need to look at the following decimal to see whether we round that one up or down. So we see that if it's greater than five or above, it's a six, we need to round it up. So to round to do, so our final answer to round up to two decimal places is 66.67%. And that will be our final answer. Okay, great. Now we can move on to the next question. What is 14% of 200? Now there are multiple ways to approach this question in particular. Since the number is 200, I believe we can, you know, I think we can take 1%, right, of 200 and then multiply that by 14, right? Because let's say 1% multiplied by 14 is 14%. Right, and 1% is relatively easy to figure out, right? 1% meaning we are taking one out of 100. One out of 100 times 200. So that just gives us two, right? And now, now we know that 1% of 200 is two. So to get 14%, we just need to multiply two by 14. So two multiplied by 14 is equal to 28. So our final answer here is simply 28. Now you could also find 10% and find 4% and then add them together, right? 10% plus 4% is equal to 14%, right? So whichever way you feel most comfortable with, I thought because of the numbers 200, this would be the simplest way. So now we'll move on to question three. So with question three, we're adding two mixed numbers here. So first step you would need to do is to add the whole numbers together, right? We have two plus three, that equals five. And then we wanna take one over two plus three over four. Now, when we add fractions, we need to make sure we find a common denominator, right? We need the bottom number to be the same on both fractions. So we can see that two and four have a common number. We can multiply two by two to get four. So we can just change the left side of the fraction and we should be good. So I'm gonna multiply the top by two here. I'm gonna multiply the bottom by two here. So one over two now becomes two over two over four. And we have to add three over four. So now the denominators are same, we can add them. We get five over four. 
Now, if we look five over four, that's an improper fraction, right? And we can easily convert that to a mixed number, which is one and one over four. So now again, because the mixed number, we can just add the whole numbers together, right? So if we take five and we add it by one and one over four, we get six and one over four, right? Because we add the whole numbers and then we add, we have the leftover uh, fraction at the end. So the only answer here is C. Now we move on to the next question. So we have 75 as a fraction of 125. Give your answer in its simplest form. So 75 as a fraction of 125 is simply just 75 over 125, right? So that's the answer to the first part of the question. And we want to give it our answer in its simplest form, right? So let's see if we can simplify this. Now, we can quite simply divide both sides by five, right? 75 can we can divide by five and 125 we can also divide by five. So if we divide these two by five, then we get 75 divided by five, that's 15 over 125 divided by five, that's 25, right? Now, can we simplify this even further? Because we need it in its simplest form. We can once again divide both sides by five, right? 15 divided by five, that's three, and 25 divided by five, that's five. Now, can we divide this once again? No, we cannot. So three over five is our final answer from this question. Now let's move on to the next question, question five. So here we are taking two fractions and subtracting each other. And then we wanna give our answer in its simplest form. So let's do the subtraction. So similar to the addition, we need to find a common denominator. We need the denominator to be the same. So here a common denominator would be 14. That's the first one that I can think of. So we can multiply the right side by two and we multiply the left side by seven, right? because seven times two is 14. So that's the common number we have here. So the first fraction one over two now becomes seven over 14. And then the second fraction becomes four over 14. So now we can just subtract them and we get three over 14. Can we reduce three over 14? Can we make it any smaller? No, we cannot. So that is our final answer to this question. Moving forward. We're now on question six. So if we look at this here, this expression we have, the first thing in your mind should, should come with order of operations, right? Or bid mass, right? So let's take a look at bid mass and follow that here. So bid mass, we have brackets, indices, division, multiplication, addition, and subtraction. So here we have brackets, right? and we have indices, we have multiplication, we have addition inside those brackets. So first, because we have brackets inside, because we have brackets in the beginning, we need to first figure out what inside the brackets, right? And then here we see multiplication and addition. And following bit mass, we need to do multiplication first. So we have, so let me just see over here, we have eight plus two times six, right? I'll look at the inside. So now that becomes eight, plus 12, because we do the multiplication first. And now eight plus 12 in the brackets just becomes 20. So now we end up with 20 in the brackets and squared. Now that we sorted the brackets, it's just 20 squared, which is 20 multiplied by 20. If you need to do that manually, you can, but the final answer you should get is 400. Great, let's move on to the next question. In this question, we are looking at what is the value of 3AB when A equals 5 and B equals 6? So when you have 3AB written like this all together, it means you want to take 3 multiplied by A multiplied by B. And we know that A is 5 and B is 6. So this means you want to take 3 times 5 times 6. Now, because it's multiplication, we can do it in any order we want. So I'm going to multiply the 5 and the 6 first. So we get 3 multiplied by 30. And that's simply just 90. 
So our final answer for this question should be 90. Now we'll move on to the next question. Question eight, we have a triangle and we wanna calculate the size of angle A. So the main thing that you need to know for this question in order to be able to solve it is that the angles of a triangle need to add up to 180 degrees. That's the trick here. So essentially, if they all need to add up to 180 degrees, we know two of the angles, 30 plus 80 plus A, which is what we're figuring out, must be to 180 degrees. Right, so to get A, we need to do 180 degrees minus 80 minus 30 degrees. So this will be 180 minus 80 is 100 minus 30 degrees, and that's just gonna be 70 degrees. And so that will be our final answer for this question. So we have 70 and then the unit degrees is already there. So we don't need to write it, but please do make sure to write it as you may lose a mark in the exam if you do not write the units. Moving on to the next question. Question nine, 900 plus 1500 divided by 300. So again, this is, you have to follow a bit mass here. We will do the division first. 1500 divided by 300 is gonna be five, right? So, I'm just going to write 900 plus 5. And that just simply becomes 905. So that's going to be our final answer for this question. Moving on to the next question. Question 10. So here we're subtracting two decimals. Now, this should be the same as subtracting in general subtraction with uh, whole numbers as well. So we can just write it out, 147.206 subtracted by 95.438. Six minus eight, we can't, we need to borrow. We can't borrow from here. So we need to borrow from the two. 10, we want to borrow from the 10, we get a nine. So if 16 minus eight, that's eight. We have now nine minus three, that's going to be six. One minus four, we can't do that. We need to borrow from the next, from the uh, from the following digit. So we need to make this a six and it becomes 11 now. So we have 11 over here. Decimal goes in the same place, right? It's three decimal places. So we have already figured out the first three decimals. Six minus five is one. Four minus nine, we can't do that. We need to borrow. Now we have 14 minus nine, that's going to be five. So our final answer will be 51. 0.768. Next question. A car can travel 480 miles in a full tank of petrol. The tank holds 60 liters. The fuel gauge shows there are 15 liters left in the tank. How many more miles can the car travel before it runs out of petrol? So here we're given contextual information. We have 480 miles on a full tank, and that full tank holds 60 liters. So in 60 liters, we can go 480 miles, right? That's what we have. It's basically a ratio type question. Fuel gauge shows that now we have 15 liters left. How many miles can the car travel before it runs out of petrol, right? So how many more, how many miles can it run in, uh, can it go in 15, with 15 liters, right? So here from 60, now we're at 15. Now, how do we get from 60 to 15, right? Using multiplication or division? Well, if you notice, we can divide by four on this side, right? From 60, if you divide it by four, you get 15. And vice versa to check, 15 times four is 60, right? That's the relation between the two numbers, right? Six, 15 is a multiple of 60. So then here, we need to do the same thing on the other side, right? To figure out the answer. We have to keep things equal, it's a ratio. So here, 480 divided by four, that's going to be 120, right? So we can travel 120 miles with 15 liters of fuel. So that's gonna be our final answer. And again, the units are written here already, so we're good to go. Next question. So now question 12, 
The probability that a salesperson will get an order from a visit to a customer is one over four. She has two visits tomorrow. What is the probability that she will get orders from both visits tomorrow? And we have to give our answer as a fraction in its simplest form. So this question should scream tree diagrams out to you. So with tree diagrams, sorry, went a bit too low. We have a we have a point here, right? So now we have an event that the salesperson will get an order. That's the event. That's what we're looking for. So either they get an order or they don't get an order. We know that the probability that they will get an order is one over four. So that means the probability that they will not get an order is three over four. They have two visits tomorrow. Now, the whether or not the first person get whether or not the first person gets an uh, you know orders from the uh, orders from the salesperson has absolutely nothing to do with the next person in making an order whether they do or don't so these are independent events so let's say we're at this point in time we're in the beginning of the day we have the first appointment and now we can either get it get an order or not so i'll just say order i'll just say no the second part, right? Those are the two events, the two possibilities that we have. We know that to get an order, it needs to be one over four, right? That's given in the question. And if they don't get an order, there's a higher chance, right? That they won't get it. It's three over four. The probabilities must add to one, right? That's how we check the answers. That's how we know how what's the probability of them not getting an order, right? I'll just rewrite this. So that's after the first one. So now, regardless of what happens in the first order, we still have two possibilities for the second order, right? Either they get either it's another order or not, or it's another order here or not. And similarly, we have one over four, three over four, it's the same probability, one over four, or three over four, correct? So now we want the probability that she will get both orders from both visits. So we want to go along this line here and go along this line here. We have a probability of one over four here and one over four here, and we have to multiply these two numbers. So one over four multiplied by one over four, that's equal to one over 16. Now we wanna give the answer as a fraction in its simplest form. Well, if you take a look, we wouldn't be able to simplify one over 16 any further, right? So that will be our final answer to this question. Great, so now we will move to the next question. So we have a table here and it shows the number of employees in different departments com compared to last year, like the change. So we have minus one in admin, we lost one person, you know, one person got fired or they quit. Design has the same number of people. Production, we employed four more people, so on and so forth. What is the total change in the number of employees compared to last year here, right? So I want to look at the total change. So here we gained four, here we gain two, so we have six new hires, but then we lost three. We lost one more here and we lost one more here. We lost five employees total. Design is all good. There's no, there's no change. So we have six that we hired and five that we lost. Six minus five, that's gonna be one. So that one means that we have one extra like we have one more person in the employee in, in the company, one new, like one extra employee in the company than before. So the answer will not be fewer for sure. It won't be 11 more because we got one. So the only answer here is B. And now we'll move to the next question. A manager wants to give a pay rise to everyone who is paid less than the average salary. We have a table that shows the annual salaries and the question asks us to tick all of the employees who are paid less than the median salary. So we want to find the median salary first. To do so, we need to sort the number that we have here, right? So I'm gonna start from smallest at the top and go down. We have 15.5 is the smallest number here. I'm gonna cross that off so that we know we've dealt with it. 16 is the next number. Then we have 18.5. Then we have 20. Then we have 22. Then we have 23 three times. So TM, WF, and LS. 
So 23, 23, 23, cross, and then 36, right? Now I'm gonna get rid of these crosses so that we can read the numbers. So now this is our sorted list of numbers and the median is the middle value. And since there are nine numbers, we need to take the fifth one over here because there's four on above it and four below it. So it's the middle value. So the median salary we figured out is 22, right? And we wanna take everyone that has less than it. So we will have four ticks here, 20, 18.5, 16, and 15. So we have AJ, tick. We have MT, tick, RD, and JR. And it says specifically less than. So we don't want, we don't care about uh, SW because they have the median salary. They don't have less than it. They have exactly that number. Others I would say less than or equal to. So do be careful and make sure you know you, you carefully read the questions. Great. So that would be our final answer for this question. And moving on to the last question, we have a scale question. The distance between two villages on a map measures six centimeters. So let's say we have a map here, right? Point A, point B. A, B, let's say, let's just say this is six centimeters. Now the map has a scale of one to 25,000. So what does that mean? So for every one centimeter on the map, right? So let's say this is one, two, three, oh, sorry, one, two, three, four, five, six, not the most even, sorry, remove one, right? One, two, three, four, five, six. Sorry, there's one more. There we go. Anyway, so let's say for each centimeter, right, that we have on the map between our points A and B, we have 25,000 centimeters in real life, right? So here we have six centimeters. So one centimeter, 25,000, two centimeters, another 25,000. So that becomes 50,000, so on and so forth. So the idea here is to take 25,000 and multiply it by six. So we get zero, 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 five times six, that's 30, carry the three, two times six is 12 plus three is 15. So we have 150,000 centimeters, right? Sorry, forgot to actually, I mean, to read the question. What is the actual distance? So that's what we calculated between the two villages in kilometers, right? And what we have here is centimeters now. So, from centimeters, we need to convert this to kilometers. So now we know that from centimeters to meters, there's 100 centimeters in one meter. So we can divide this by 100, right, to get to meters. At least that will help us get closer. So 150 centimeters, well, sorry, 150,000 centimeters into meters is 1,500. OK? And then from meters, we need to convert to kilometers. So now there are 1,000 meters in a kilometer. So we need to divide by 1,000 now. And so that will give us 1.5 kilometers. And that will be our final answer to this question. Do note that the units are already here, so it's good. But otherwise, please do write the units as so. But since it's already there, we should be good to go. And so that is the final answer to this question. And we have finished the non-calculator paper.